On this week's episode of the White Knuckle Web Show, we're checking in with Ted Miller from Iowa. Going into last season, he had high hopes of catching up with a few familiar bucks. Now, Ted's famous for his horizontal rubs, the giant bucks that he passes, finding ridiculously large sheds, Ted Miller is probably going to be one of the most laid back people that you've ever met. He's taken chasing whitetails to a whole nother level. It's not just about the deer anymore. It's about the hunt and the appreciation of the whitetails. This is Ted Miller's 2015 season. We're cutting us a horizontal rub this morning. Really all we got left to do is trim up uh, the little branches off the main limb and uh, it'll be ready to put up. First horizontal rub that I did was actually right in this spot here uh, several years ago. Had a nice, real nice 12 pointer come up and work it. Kind of messed up on the chance of getting him there, but we already got our scotch pine limb cut here. We've already set the two uh, poles to put it on. We're just going to set it here and and wire it up. Got a real good stand of turnips and winter peas and uh, rye. So it's real green and uh, we got a ground blind set up right behind us. Hopefully we can get Jawbreaker or another big buck to work it here. Probably hunt it the latter part of October, probably, you know, in a month or so. So we'll just kind of leave it here and leave it alone. Hopefully a big buck will find this spot and uh, use this rub and we'll get him shot out of that ground blind. That's the idea. It didn't take long for Jawbreaker to find his horizontal rub. For those of you following Ted's story, you'll be happy to see the Jawbreaker buck is back. And he's added some more character. This will be the buck that Ted's going after this season. This is a horizontal rub here where Jawbreaker's been on a few times over the years. Uh, so we sneak in here this afternoon and uh, for some reason the horizontal rub is laying on the ground. I don't know uh, whether we didn't get it wired up good enough there and a deer tore it off. But fortunately we got the covert cameras running on it and uh, we'll have to check the footage there when we get back or whatever, see what tore it up. But uh, well, we had that fork G2 buck on here. Oh, it's been a couple of weeks ago now, but uh, kind of a little bit rainy this afternoon. Uh, pretty good wind for this stand, so uh, we'll sit here this afternoon and see if anything shows up. Well, we're in the stand here. Got a horizontal rub set up here. This is a pretty thick little brush patch. Uh, well, we got a corn field that's been picked here and a bean field over here where they go to feed. It's kind of a little corner bottleneck area. Got the horizontal rub set up here. It's been uh, three or four pretty good bucks on this rub and uh, it's pretty close to where we got that big uh, Oh, found that shed there last spring there uh, you know real nice long tined narrow buck uh, picked him up on trail camera this summer he looked like uh, he's grown a little bit so really nice buck he could come through here he's kind of the target buck in this area
Well, it was a pretty good little encounter there. Uh, man, real nice dark horn buck. Uh, got a couple of stickers coming off uh, the brows there. Uh, he's just kind of slowly walking, uh, checking out them does, but uh, we actually got him on this horizontal rub here about a week ago. Uh, man, that's a nice buck there. He's about as dark a horned one as you'll see in this country, but uh, real pretty. And then on November 3rd, Ted got a chance that he's been waiting for for years. Jawbreaker showed up and right under his tree stand. Pretty close encounter there with Jawbreaker. Uh, kind of messed it up. It's probably uh, it's my fault there. He, he was in on us before we knew it or whatever. The it's kind of damp this morning. We had the wind perfect for this little setup here, uh, so I was able to get the camera on him there. And uh, but he was looking right at us the whole time, and he was he knew something was up right here. So. Uh, he ended up working the rub a little bit, but not enough to draw his attention away from us or whatever. So he ended up kind of walking on down the trail and, you know, a few steps there. And I kind of grunted and stopped him there. And I thought I had a little window to shoot and uh, hit a lamb there. Just, I don't really think he spooked too much. I mean, we got the wind. I don't think he ever winded us, but he definitely knew we were sitting here in the tree or knew something was. So but our setup worked just uh, a little bit of failure on my part I guess but that's the way it goes we'll uh, hopefully have another encounter with him before it's all over with Ted would continue to hunt Jawbreaker but wouldn't get another encounter or even many trail camera videos for that matter until a fateful day in December yeah, good, good shit dog good shit dog well heck I guess this uh, ends the Jawbreaker saga. Uh, come down here, uh, check trail camera on the food plot. We actually, uh, <laughs> we put in this food plot just specifically to keep him in this area this fall and it pretty much worked. Uh, he uh, showed up on trail camera here quite often there early and then uh, he just kind of disappeared towards the latter part of November. So when he quit showing up on trail camera, I just had that gut feeling that something had happened to him and come down in here today and uh, actually the shed dog, he come with me and he kind of come up missing there for a little bit and, and I looked up and saw which direction he came from and I basically just walked where he came from and, and walked into Jawbreaker. You know, looked like he's been dead, you know, two or three weeks. Don't know what from, but uh, 
we'll go up and take a look at him and uh, and uh, take it from there. Pretty impressive in person here. <laughs> it's almost almost fitting that I didn't kill him. I mean, you you just become uh, attached to him, I guess. You know, it it used to be hard to hard to pass a buck up, but now that I've got older, it's you know it's just hard to kill him. So really, it's it's fitting that he. I'm going to say he died of natural causes, and uh, you know that's a that's a fitting end of the story. I'm very very fortunate to to have a buck like this in the area. You know, it's just uh, they just don't come like this very often. Definitely was photogenic. I'll say that for him. I mean, he. <laughs> I'd hate to say how much video and trail cam pictures I've got of him over the last three years. Ted has been following the Jawbreaker buck for three years, and this is the first time that he passed him. He then found his three-year-old shed, got velvet footage of him that summer, and even went on to pass him as a four-year-old. One of the best documented hunts ever. He then got more velvet footage of him next summer. Didn't get a shot at him, but got plenty of trail camera videos the next season. found that shed the following spring, had a crazy velvet encounter with him at five yards. You know, and it's just a deer. It's not my deer. It's uh, just just a wild animal. You know, I'm, I'm guessing, probably I'm the only one that ever saw him alive you know, on hoof. You know, there's there's a couple other, or one in particular, that buck that destroyed the horizontal rub, real aggressive buck right here, and, and they kind of hung out together. And, uh, you know, during the rut, you know, they could have got, he could have got a tine stuck in him or something. That that last trail cam video I got of him, he just, just something didn't look right. I mean, it was in like three o'clock in the morning, I think on the 18th of November, and he just he just didn't look 100% healthy in my opinion. And I never got him on trail camera after that. So we'll just contact the local game warden and get him in here and check out the scene and see what he wants to do so we can salvage him. Uh, we'll either put our bow tag on him or a salvage tag, whatever, but we want to make sure we do this right. But there's other bucks out there, and uh, we'll uh, look forward to hunting some of them. It's actually a pretty good buck right here on the trail camera that showed up this fall. Real impressive deer. I think, I guess we'll start hunting him. Well, I think, <laughs> I think we'll call him Jailbreaker, just to keep the breaker theme. We had the Heartbreaker buck. Now we got Jawbreaker. And the new buck, I think we're called Jailbreaker, just on the count of, I'd probably break out of jail to shoot him. <laughs> so you got to just take it as it is. But, uh, you know, it hurts a little bit. Thank you, Ted and Jailbreaker, for three great years. On the next episode of the White Nickel Web Show, it's more Ted Miller. It's Miller time. Vortex Optics, this is Ruben. Hey Ruben, I have a few questions. Yeah, go ahead with your questions. Uh-huh. Ring torque. 
Yeah, we get that question all the time. Oh, really? Yep. You're going to want to use 15 to 18 inch pounds on those ring screws. Really? That easy? Yeah. Yep. Just that simple. I sent it some binoculars. Well, uh, I can get you over to Lynette in customer care and she can take care of that for you, okay? Okay. Yeah, one second. Thanks. Good afternoon, this is Lynette. Hi, I just sent this some binoculars. Yeah. I just want to make sure you got it. Let me check. What's your name? Ryan Anderson. Yep, it looks like we just received it two days ago and it should be back out the door in three to seven business days. All right, thank oh, you. Thank you. Have a great day. Hi, I'm David Morris. You know, Takamani is a company that was forced into business by the big deer we grew. And the real magic of growing more and bigger deer is in the warm season food plots that provide that high protein nutrition during the summer when the bucks are growing those great big antlers. And no other company has a selection of warm season products that Takamani Seed does. Need proof? Welcome to the world of Takamani. Takamani Seed, first in wildlife nutrition. For more information, log on to Takamani.com.